Hi, I'm Phyllis, southernfrugal.com. Uh, I wanted to do a little video this morning um, on some instructions from my mother. Now, uh, me and my siblings learned these rules very early. In fact, so early, I don't really remember when the rules first started. But uh, they were from the 1950s, and some things um, don't apply now and have have proven to be wrong, but a lot of them were true. Now, uh, I'm sure that y'all were probably raised in a similar way that we were uh, in the 1950s. You, uh, there were just rules, and you just followed them. So, all right, so one of the things was, and I put this as number one, I was just writing them down as I thought of them. Uh, one of the things was that uh, when you wash your hair, you use uh, two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar in a glass of water and you do this uh, and rinse your hair after you shampooed and rinsed out as much of the shampoo as you could get out. You put that in your hair and that makes your hair shiny and gets all the soap out. And this was really before the day of cream rinses. So, uh, you know, we were all young and, you know, it was easy to comb your hair when you got when you're young and got nice healthy hair. But anyway, um, the other thing was um, when I got to be a teenager, I started washing my hair every day. And my mother would say, Phyllis, you're gonna wash the color right out of your hair if you keep washing it every day like that. But I still kept on washing it every day. But anyway, um, she didn't want you to wash your hair but once a week and y'all know, it is very hard to go a whole week without washing your hair when you're a teenager. It really is. Anyway, um, also you brush your, your teeth just before going to bed. Don't eat or drink anything after you brush your teeth. And don't interrupt when adults are talking, no matter what. Never, ever interrupt. And if you did, you really, well, you got punished if you did that. Uh, don't soak a cast iron skillet in the sink ever because we both me and my sister did that once and we never heard the end of it because it, it will cause a cast iron skillet to rust if you soak it in the sink with soap dish detergents it'll it'll rust all right don't be late for supper ever we serve supper at a certain time every night you better be here so uh, always serve something green with your main meal and uh, mostly it would with mother it would be green beans uh, green peas uh, one of those salads the with the lettuce tomato and mayonnaise cooked cabbage or cooked greens and uh, she she really used coleslaw a lot I think she just really liked coleslaw and uh, we, we always knew there'd be coleslaw on the table if it wasn't a little salad, so she was real strict about that. And uh, we could never eat cereal for breakfast. It, my, my dad and mother but both thought it wasn't a substantial breakfast, so we had bacon and eggs, sausage and eggs, every single morning, seven days out of the week. That's what we had. All right take the skin off the chicken. You always had to take the skin off the chicken before you fried it. it that's just the way it was. And I think uh, I never learned to eat chicken skin. I know some people love it. I'm, Mr. Bucky can eat it, but I can't stand the way it feels in my mouth. I don't care how crispy it is. And again, these are things that you grow up with. You don't ever forget them and they just follow you all through your life. They really do. Keep your mouth closed while you're chewing. Big, that was big. You cannot chew with your mouth open and people can see the food in your mouth. Uh, you never get in the car with someone you don't know. Now, I did a video on when I got in the car with that highway patrolman back, it's been quite a number of years ago now, but I'll have to say, I sort of knew not to do that, but I did it anyway, and we went back to the place where I had hit the deer. My mother said, don't get in the car. It doesn't matter if it's a policeman or do not get in the car with someone you don't know. So anyway, 
uh, don't be late for an appointment. And the reason for that is you're not more important than the person that you have the appointment with. So don't be late. Uh, always do more than is asked of you. Always do a little extra something. Now, I don't think we always did that when we got to be teenagers. We just wanted to get through our chores and be done with it. Uh, don't talk at the dinner table, ever. Now, what happened on that is uh, we, there were six chairs, and uh, me and my sister sat beside each other. She was uh, about two and a half years older than me. And as we got older, if we got to talking at the table, we would get in an argument, and my daddy got really tired of it fast. So finally he said, there'll be no talking at the table. So we, everybody just sat there in silence. We ate our meal, and then when we got through with our meal, we could talk, but you couldn't talk while you were at the dinner table. Uh, and also, uh, you had to look neat and clean when you leave the house. I don't care if it was summer vacation or what. You could you you had to look neat when you left the house. All right. Uh, don't sit back while someone else is working. If somebody's doing something, get up and help them. Whatever it is. So, uh, someone's at our door. We'll be back in a minute. Okay, I am back and I'm happy to report that was UPS and they have just delivered my new cooktop. So, happy about that. Alright, so to continue on with this, always sweep the kitchen floor after a meal. Always wipe off the table. Now, sometimes uh, me and my sister couldn't seem to do the dishes together because we finally, as we were teenagers, we would be fussing about one thing or another. And so uh, it turned out that I would clean up the whole kitchen and do all the dishes one night and she would do it the next night. And um, sometimes we would forget to sweep the floor, sometimes forget to wipe the table off. Anyway, that was bad. All right, when you get ice from the freezer, always spill the ice tray. Have y'all ever been guilty of that? Back before the day of ice makers. and. Uh, I was certainly guilty of that, and of course, if no one was in the kitchen, they didn't know you were the one that got the ice, right? But anyway, that was a big one. Uh, wipe your feet before coming in the house. Now, Mother kept a, a big scatter rug in both at the front door and the back door, and you always had to wipe your feet before you came in. Watch out for your younger brother and sister. Now, this is before my, my youngest brother was born. So we had to make sure that none of the other kids beat up our little brother or our little sister. Always do your homework. Always. Don't miss a school bus, because if you miss a school bus, I'm not taking you to school. You'll just sit home all day. Yeah, that didn't happen often, maybe a couple of times to me and probably three or four times with my sister because she was always busy fixing her hair. All right, buy the plate lunch at school, it's good for you. Don't chew gum or bubble gum, it's bad for your teeth. Now, we still chewed bubble gum and chewing gum, but never in front of my mother. Don't sit close to the TV. It could be bad for your eyes. Now, that's probably not true and probably wasn't true back then. Don't take food out of the kitchen. We were never allowed to take food in and watch TV, and certainly we're not allowed to take it into the bedroom. This is a good one, and this one was true too, by the way. Never use someone else's hairbrush or comb, ever. And the reason you don't want to do that is because you could get head lice. Now, nobody in our family ever got head lice, but there were certainly kids in school that, that did have head lice. All right. Turn the radio down. It could hurt your hearing. And that was probably true. Uh, listen to your daddy. He knows best. So whatever it was, whatever he said, that's the way it was. Don't try to be first in line. Let someone else go in front of you. I still do that to this day. Don't talk about people behind their backs. Just don't do it. Now, 
I'll have to tell you, I've heard my mother talk about people behind their back, but we were never allowed to do it. Don't tell a secret unless you want everyone to know. Just don't tell anybody. Because once you tell one person, even though they're sworn to secrecy, they're probably going to tell somebody. Be quiet in church and sit still. Pay attention to the pastor. Now this was before, the, there's Peppy. That's, he, he hadn't barked hardly, I mean he hasn't coughed hardly any this morning. Now he, see it's just a short little cough he's been doing. All right, so uh, listen to the pastor. This was before the days of children's church. So we had to sit in the big sanctuary. We had to be perfectly still. We could not talk. And we were taught this from a very, very young age. You just sat there. It was always an hour. It was always an hour. You just sat there, which was probably good for young children to learn how to sit still. All right. Never, this was a good one, never take the biggest piece of meat, let someone else get it. Many times, we, even at my grandmother's, if we had meals, because I guess all of us grandchildren were kind of taught the same way, because I think the teachings came from my grandmother, uh, the biggest piece of meat would still be left after everyone finished. It would still be there on the, on the plate. All right. Uh, don't take out more than you can eat. And if you did, the, the comment was always made, well, it looks like your eyes were bigger than your stomach. Yeah, which was a little embarrassing. If someone is hurt, go get their mother. Common sense, right? All right, don't put coins in your mouth. It could lodge in your windpipe and kill you. Now this actually happened to a young child that lived not too far from us. Uh, she swallowed a nickel and they didn't realize that she had swallowed something and it finally started swelling in her throat and she died that night. A very young little girl, I think she was four or five years old. Never hang around with someone who lies, cheats, or steals. They could get you in trouble. Right. Yeah. All right. Girls always sit with your legs together. Now this was, this was in the 1950s, and of course everybody wore dresses. You you weren't allowed to wear any kind of pants to school, and most people didn't even own a pair of blue jeans or kind of slacks or anything. And I don't think they started wearing slacks uh, really. I just don't. I guess it was the mid 1950s, and. Uh, that, that's, I don't even remember having a pair before then. But anyway, always sit with your legs together. That's proper. All right, don't bite your fingernails. They could keep growing in your stomach and then you'd need to have surgery. I know, I'm sure that was not true, but it would get people to not bite their fingernails. Never wear white after Labor Day. It's improper. Don't ever do that. If you had white shoes in the summer, which we frequently did, or white sandals, even though it was still hot in September, or the first of September, because we this, this is when we were living in Virginia, and even in North Carolina, it's still hot, the first of September, but you, you just can't wear white after that. Never run the vacuum cleaner in the bathroom or the kitchen. It could suck up water and electrocute you. <laughs> I'm sure that was not true, but we were afraid, so we never ever ran the vacuum cleaner. Now, now I run the vacuum cleaner in all the bathrooms, I run it in the kitchen. I never even stopped to think about that because I know I couldn't get electrocuted. Always turn the light off when you leave the room. Be thankful for what you have. Your daddy works very hard so we can buy you the things you need. Yeah, Mama never, ever let us forget that. Share with others who don't have as much as you. Don't eat in front of others without sharing. And have, have y'all seen people do that? Where I remember uh, being at a friend's house one time, and uh, it, I had gone over there for some reason. I forget what it was, some, something. And uh, they had just finished their supper, and they were having cake for dessert. And she came in and brought everybody their cake and didn't even ask me if I wanted a piece of cake. I thought, where was she raised? Yeah, not that I wanted any cake, but 
you know, you need to offer it. All right. Eating candy will give you cavities. Now, I know y'all all heard that, and there might have been truth in that, too, but we heard that all the time. Uh, don't tell on others, unless it's really serious, and you need to tell an adult, but don't tell on others this makes enemies, which is very true. And this was a big one. Who do you think is going to clean up that mess you've made? <laughs> We cleaned it up ourselves, so. All right, don't drink milk with fish. Just don't drink milk with fish. Now, I never knew what the reason of, of that could possibly be, but we were raised that way, and to this day, I don't really, well, of course, I don't really drink milk now, but, but I would have a great deal of difficulty doing that. Anyway, all right, I wanted to tell y'all one other thing. Some of y'all have actually bought this book from my website. I saw it on my little Amazon thing. Uh, this book, Putting Food By, is the first book that I got to do with canning and freezing back in the 1970s. Now, we did a lot of uh, canning to do with my grandmother at her house and at Mama's house. And Mama did some freezing. and. Uh, some of the things she froze were not successful, and some of them were very successful. She finally even got rid of her freezer because she had uh, frozen, a, I mean, a bunch of string beans, and they turned out to be mush, and she just got really disgusted with it. But anyway, uh, this book uh, it has been updated. Now, I first got a copy of it in... Um, I believe it was 19, about 1972, I'm trying to see when it was first published. Yeah, I, I, I didn't tell in here, at least, uh, anyway, the book has been, yeah, I did, here it is, text, illustrate, copy, 1973, so I, I, that must be when I got my first copy of it, it was a paperback then. Now I got this, the, the hard copy says, that it's um, $22.95. I don't know what it sells for on Amazon, but I put a link to this book on my website on uh, uh, products I highly recommend because this goes into uh, preserving and canning, uh, canning convenience foods, dietary tips, Christmas presents, freezing for the microwave, and I think it's got dehydrating in here everything you could imagine and it tells you about each individual uh, vegetable and, and that's exactly uh, why I got it. Can you all see that right there? Let me see if I can see it starts out there asparagus and it tells you about them when they come into uh, into harvest and uh, how to can them, how to handle them, and uh, the whole whole nine yards, really. And I have uh, given away, or had taken from me by my daughter, by my sister, my by, by my brother, uh, and so I kept having to buy the book again because they'd say, "Well, let me let me uh, borrow that book for a little while," and I never got it back. So anyway, the first copy I had was uh, paperback and it came uh, from a garden center that I used to get some plants from. They had it on a little rack, and uh, I thought, well, I need to learn some stuff from that. So anyway, Putting Food By, it's an excellent book. It's been around for a long time, and it's been updated many, many times. Now, it even tells you how to uh, uh, salt meat, how to make sauerkraut, how to smoke meat, and uh, you name it it's in here. So it's a good book to buy. Now, I bought it used. I did not pay $22.95 for it. It seems like it was about $8. And this is a hard copy. So anyway, uh, it's interesting to know that it's still in print after all these years. So you know it's got to be good. Anyway, so that's the, that's it. A little update on Peppy. You want to come up here and let them see you? Come here. Now he might start coughing when I pick him up. Let's see if we can get him. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. There he is. Here, can you look in camera? Uh oh. Let's see. Maybe he won't cough. Pippi, can you look in camera and show them that you're much better this morning? There he is. He's much, much better. He coughed very little. 
uh, this morning. In fact, I don't think he coughed until maybe about 10.30 this morning. Yeah, he's getting much better. And I do think his main problem was he had the uh, reaction to the kennel cough. And I appreciate y'all's prayers because they definitely worked. He is so much better, right? Aren't you better this morning? Yeah. All right. All right, y'all. We will see y'all next time. And uh, please leave comments and tell me what, like your mother and your dad told y'all. I'm, I'm sure some of the things were similar. And particularly, I think everybody we knew uh, back in the 1950s said, don't eat uh, fish and drink milk. And uh, and of course, we liked that because we were we had to drink milk at our meals, except in the summertime we had um, iced tea. But you know, and at, at school, the only thing to drink with your meal at school was milk. You did, in fact, in Virginia, they didn't even have chocolate milk. You had to drink regular milk, and uh, so uh, it, we just it was just known you don't drink milk and eat fish. I don't know where all that came from. But anyway, y'all leave comments and tell me how things were when you were growing up. Some of you, y'all are my age or maybe a little younger and you remember the 50s and what your parents taught you. All right, we will see y'all next time. Bye for now.